So my name is Marc Durantor, I am from uh, uh, from CA, so uh, CA is a non-profit research and technology organization uh, uh, based in France. So we just discussed this morning uh, during the introduction what is uh, what is your dream as a digital uh, uh, a personal assistant. So. Uh, for me, uh, we already have this digital uh, personal assistant, and we see that most of the people, and just here, uh, have one request, so to enforce privacy. So in Europe, uh, we just have the GDPR, which has consequences on how we design this personal assistant, and in both ways. But because basically now the, what people are using is this. Each time they go to a website, they have a pop-up, and which is very bore, uh, 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 cumbersome, and they all click yes. So that's the opposite uh, uh, idea, because they don't read what they are allowing the company to do. So that's a good idea, GDPR, but with this, it's a bad implementation. So it's, it's where we need to have assistant to help you in this. And of course, I would like to have assistant that provides me also support or warranty or shielding uh, uh, between the hackers, the spoofing on all the malware, and also about the fake news. But that's not the subject of, of today. I will focus mainly on the, on the privacy issue. So uh, it's why we need this, uh, uh, this digital uh, guardian angel here. So uh, uh, when you are a user, you want to do two things. So the first one is to share data, and typically sharing on a, on a Facebook. But even in Facebook, you don't know what are the parameters, if it's public, private, and things like that. So you will have a, a set of parameters. And of course, what you want to share on the public uh, uh, in Facebook is certainly not the same kind of information that you would like to share with, with your doctor, uh, for example. So that means that there are different privacy requirements. So the second topic is getting data from the web here. So uh, 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 there are several topics of it, but I will focus on what I just explained. Due to the GDPR, we have all these very annoying pop-up. So one idea here is to have an intelligent assistant that will browse through the condition and knowing your profile will, will click instead of you so that it will be like the old web uh, uh, without uh, all these pop-ups. So all this will be done in the background with your, uh, by your assistant. Okay, so that's why I need this uh, digital guardian angel that will protect me both when I will share data and uh, when I will get data. So uh, 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 now I will focus mainly on the sharing data side. And this is the result of, uh, of a project that started five or six years ago, so it's already uh, finished, that's, uh, that its aim was to uh, uh, analyze all the framework of the online social networks and also trying to understand a little bit uh, uh, how personal data should be handled and also how people behave about it. So uh, uh, one of the goals is to build this semi-automatic awareness tool to assist uh, the user uh, in their interaction uh, with personal data. So typically, uh, this is very important because most of the people don't, didn't really realize what are private data. So of course, some very personal things like your PIN number of your uh, credit card, they understand that is pri uh, private data. But uh, for example, when they post a picture on the web, they don't know really if it's private, if it's public, and things like that. So the idea here is to have a tool that will analyze what are the consequences if you publish this picture on the, on the web. And uh, this is an example here where we have two pictures. And depending uh, uh, on the use, so if you are an insurance company, you could say that, well, this guy has a healthy risk uh, because he's drinking a lot and things like that. And also for the job, that might not be a good, uh, a good profile. And we see now that more and more companies are looking into a, a, a Facebook on their uh, private data to have an assessment of their uh, future uh, new employees. 
So we have made a tool which is bat, uh, based on a technology we developed for, uh, for quite a long time. It's called uh, SIMFET. So that's basically, well, it's, uh, it's, it's a deep neural network, but we cut it into two phases. Let's say one universal uh, a, a part, uh, which is basically making a universal description of the image and it's adapted to a very large number of classes on the classifier that could be easily added by the user on a particular application. So now um, the system is able to understand, to, to, uh, to analyze about uh, um, uh, 80,000 uh, uh, different classes. And uh, we test it in the real field, so in the, uh, one of the, a benchmark which was medieval. So the idea is that uh, you learn about 25 million images from the web and the competition was uh, on a half a million image, you need to identify where the image is located. And we went first uh, during the three years of the, um, of the challenge. So it's quite easy when you have a picture of the Eiffel Tower, you know that it's in Paris, but on general picture, it's far more uh, difficult. So we get to have uh, in 70% of the image to have an accurate location within 100 kilometer. So the same tools or the same technologies also used this year in the food, in the food classification. So in the Kaggle, we were uh, third. Uh, you, you could say, ah, you were not first, but it was with this general purpose tool and not with a tool tuned to, uh, towards this application. And it could also work on the face classification with uh, 35,000 uh, classes. So what we did for this, uh, uh, for this uh, application to have an assessment of the privacy of your data. So the idea here, as it was explained in some, some of the previous talk, we transform, let's say, the image into text document with a set of, uh, uh, with a set of annotation. And with this, uh, we could uh, uh, build a corpus of, uh, of a, uh, from the set of a private data. And then also we apply LDA, Latin Dirichlet allocation, to create, let's say, a topic model, so higher class classes from, uh, from this. So, so we went from image to a more semantical approach of the, of the interpretation. So typically, when you see this image, so you could see that the second level semantic representation uh, goes more high level concept, like drinking and things like that. So that's the idea where you could have a better uh, uh, idea of the context on, on the implication for your, uh, for your privacy. So we implement it into, into an app. Uh, so here you could see that, uh, that you could uh, link to this app, uh, 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 your Instagram, uh, your Facebook, and a general profile, it will give you some of the uh, uh, quality here. Sorry, it's in French, so uh, it's not yet translated. So about your uh, alcohol consumption, about extreme sport, about uh, uh, your political impression, uh, uh, and things like that. So, so, so that gives you, from your profile, what's uh, what could be uh, 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 inferred from your um, uh, personality, uh, uh, from the external st uh, stuff. And it even goes onto, onto detailed pr uh, profiles. So uh, uh, on, on particular image, it could say, uh, say that in the image in the middle, well, it's, uh, it's a high risk because it's, uh, you show unhealthy uh, food. So uh, uh, if an insurance company see that, it could increase uh, 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 your fees because, yeah, it's, you could be at risk. While on the other image, it's, uh, it's uh, healthy food, so that's good. You should put that uh, here. So that's really an advisor to help you to share the right data or at least to understand what are the implications when you shared this. So that's, uh, that's a key problem because most of the people didn't really see the implication. So this could be done automatically. So now I will switch to the other part, uh, which is uh, uh, basically when you get data and particularly what's uh, uh, it's not done yet, what we could do for the interpretation of the, of the GDPR uh, data um, uh, on pop-up. And again here, it's, uh, it's uh, based on, uh, on a general, uh, in a tool qu a quite generic that we developed during at least uh, uh, 10 years uh, uh, old. Uh, it's used 
using a deep learning. It's, uh, it's open source for the general engine, and it's cover uh, a twil a 12 languages, and it was used by several uh, industries from, uh, uh, fr from banking like CA, uh, 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 like oil company, Total, from, from Airbus, and things like that. I will show you a few, few examples of uh, what this tool uh, uh, can do. So this is one application that we did for, for Bureau of Veritas, and the goal is to analyze the, uh, regular, uh, the regulatory uh, um, uh, constraints. So, uh, uh, so all the laws are different in each country, even in Europe. Uh, uh, in each country, they have different set of laws, and the laws are evolving, and the regulatory uh, constraints are also evolving. So typically, uh, uh, this tool is able to collect uh, all, the, um, all the information and give you recommendation. And if you want to sell this product into this country, then that's the set of recommendation that you should uh, that you should do. And typically uh, now it's uh, it's browsing uh, twelve thousand official source of information. And unfortunately, uh, they are not labeled. Uh, so um, uh, so you you really need to analyze the text, and there is no metadata that could help you to analyze the text. And the tool is browsing typically uh, 20,000 uh, web pages per day uh, for, uh, for being um, um, uh, 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 accurate day-to-day. Uh, -day. Uh, so the same tool is also used uh, for uh, um, uh, classification, so uh, seeing that it's also cover uh, languages that are different from English, French, so more Latin-based languages, uh, like, like a, a Chinese here, is basically for the Chinese social security to check if, uh, if from a, a prescription is corresponding to the disease here. So typically here from this uh, prescription, it could go to, uh, to, the, um, uh, to check if it's correct for this kind of stuff. So, so that because uh, people could uh, want to have some other drugs for, uh, for other topics. So we get a 98% uh, of, uh, of accuracy. And uh, for the uh, oil company total, so the idea here is, is to summarize into uh, a, a very small information uh, uh, the news in their domain. So typically here to know that, okay, the, uh, uh, one company, a Petrogas, get uh, some, uh, some new allocation in, uh, in oil field here from, uh, uh, from a complete text. So it's this kind of technology that we, uh, that we want to apply to be able to browse uh, uh, all the web of all this legal stuff to be able to know exactly what are uh, in this recommendation so that you could set the flag according to your own uh, uh, privacy uh, requirements. And now uh, this kind of tool we are using to a chatbot uh, like Almond, but on a particular domain. So the idea here is really uh, uh, to be uh, oriented towards a particular business. So the idea is to feed the system with documentation on equipment and things like that, so that after uh, the chatbot could uh, interact with the user in a natural language on this particular domain. And indeed, this could be linked to off-the-shelf uh, a system like, uh, uh, like Facebook book, uh, 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 Google, and the other here. So just to finish um, uh, my presentation, I would like to uh, 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 give you some long-term view or, or, or evolution that we uh, see today, because uh, this year is the 30th anniversary of the World Wide Web, which was invented in Europe, and which is an open standard now. So we hope that the next generation of, uh, of personal assistant will be like this. So what we see today is that typically most of the thing is done on the cloud remotely and the data are, let's say, kept by the, uh, by the big company that's, uh, that are processing uh, your data here. Uh, so we see a trend, and we just uh, uh, see the presentation of, uh, of Google about, uh, well, uh, what we could say HEI, where basically the processing is done locally, which is better for, uh, for privacy because your data remain near you and didn't go necessarily 
uh, to um, uh, uh, far away or another uh, uh, a country, which could be a problem for the GDPR if your data is flowing from Europe to the US and things like that. So what we could see in the future is that uh, the web will be more a repository of skills, of knowledge, uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and then all the personal assistants will be able to access this knowledge in, a, in an interactive way and in, in a dynamic way. So I think that's uh, uh, what, uh, what Almond is doing and uh, is perhaps the next uh, the next web, uh, so for us it should be like the web, open to everybody with, imp with interoperability, with a standard so that each people could bring, could access to the knowledge and could cooperate. And about cooperation, that's my last sl uh, slide, is that we really need this collaboration between uh, a human and machine. I would like the machine to be my digital guardian angel, to be a really high peak, uh, helping me to access to the cyberspace. But also, I need to help it, and as some, uh, some talk were presented uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, today, is to improve also the capability of the machine. So, human in the loop and how to improve it is also a key, a key element for, uh, um, uh, for us. Thank you very much. Is a public cloud feasible? Well, in, in, uh, 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 in Europe, we, we would like to have a public cloud, yes. Uh, the problem is that it will be, uh, it might be now to have uh, uh, a French public cloud, a uh, German public cloud, and things like that. We are not yet here. And a public cloud that is cross-border uh, cross will be even more difficult because of mainly uh, legal reasons. Not technical reason, of course. So we work a lot uh, with Japan, and here we do have problem because we cannot process in Europe data that were generated in Japan, and vice versa, due to the uh, both regulation of both countries.